So um, I want to real quick just go over last week. We were very blessed to have Apostle Bob Hauselman speak. Uh, we started a sermon series last week on the fivefold ministry gifts. And so you can see up here, I put this little bucket up here. Last week it was over here because we received from the apostolic. This morning, me, you, the bucket, which has a nozzle on it here so that you can pour out because what goes into us is what's gonna come out, right? Right? So this morning we're going to hear for about the prophetic. But before we do, I want to just briefly uh, go over a few of the things that were said last week that were really, really good. Uh, first of all, we're talking about the, the, the gospel, we're talking about culture. First of all, Jesus did not preach the culture of the church, he preached the culture of the kingdom. Amen? There is a difference there. One of the things that Apostle Bob pointed out and that was in scripture that I really love and I think that we all need to hear again is that God gave the fivefold gifts, these guys right here, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, gave fivefold gifts to the church. That would be us here. He gave the church to the world. Amen? And the common misconception is that, well, that's what we pay the preacher for to go and to, to, to evangelize the people, to go and to visit them in the hospital and to go and to do all these other things. But really what it is is that God gave these folks to the church to equip to send. And so if we can grab a hold of that mindset, I think we're gonna be a much more effective church in this world and in our community. That it is the fivefold gifts given to the church, but the church has been given to the world. You have been given to the world, amen? Amen. Um, just a couple other things that I noted that I think were really good. Uh, we never go, especially the apostolic, never goes with their own message. We go with the message that was given to us through his message. It's not our message that we're giving. It's his message that we take with us. Amen. And one of the other, the final thing I wanted to just touch on was this, and I love this. Leadership is not about dominance. Leadership is about service. So if your leadership is dominant, that's where you're gonna run into some issues. You want leadership that is about service. And that's why we have this saying around here, it's not about you, it's not about me. It's not about me. I don't carry my own message. I carry his message. It's all about him. It better always be about him. And so anyway, I just wanted to touch on a few of those things this morning. If you weren't here, you didn't have an opportunity to listen to that, I would recommend you go back and listen because this morning, it's gonna be awesome. We're gonna hear a word from Prophet Meinrich Sprigler. I hope you are ready this morning. I hope your ground is prepared and it's ready to receive some seed of the word of God. Amen? Amen. So if you would, please help me to welcome Prophet Meinrich Sprigler. Am I on? I'm there. Yeah. Glory, hallelujah. I always like to start off and wake the church up with uh, something an old preacher taught me. It was a word, hallelujah. Yeah. The music's loud, can I be loud? Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. You know, it's been an awesome trip through these years trying to figure this five-fold ministry out, and uh, if you don't know where I came from, my name is Prophet Manuel Sprigler. If you can't understand the name, at least remember Jesus. Um, I started out, I think back in 1976, that uh, God called me before I even knew there was a faith covenant restoration or whatever, what we call now, restoration. Amen. They changed their names many times. I mean, I just said I was just going to be a Christian. How about that? <laughs> I was in a substation in Louisville, Kentucky, working on a unit, and God spoke to me out of Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I had no idea what he's talking about, but I just stopped in my tracks and raised up my hands to, to the Lord, and that's how the foreman found me when he came in the door. And I tried to stay there a few more weeks and so, and, and I said, God, give me two more weeks, I'll get a vested pension here. Because they had a good pension. 
and, 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 and an electrical big uh, substation blew up in my face. I said, God, you tell me it's time to leave and you, ta- and you take care of me. And when I came into the ministry, God took care of me. He had to teach me that he would take care of his servants. He, he brought food in from other sources to our family. He brought money from other sources. The church didn't believe what we believed. He brought in money to my family because the church didn't have much back then. We took our paycheck a lot of times and paid the electric bill, if you wonder where we came from, amen? Because we wanted to keep the lights on so you could see the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen? And that's what the prophets is all about, sharing you the gospel of Jesus Christ, not who you are, amen? And sometimes he might just call you out and say, here's what God told me to tell you. Now, don't get on me if you don't like what God tells you because um, I'm just a vessel. Like I said one time, a styrofoam cup. What do you do with it after you drink the beverage? You don't say, what a beautiful cup. No, you just take a bite out of it and throw it away or just crush it up, <laughs> throw it in a garbage can, right? And that's... That's the, that's the gist of it. If you can't handle that, don't ever get into the ministry. Amen? <laughs> prophets today is what I call it because there, are, there were prophets of old which came out of times and yelled at you and took off. Prophets today have to live with the people. They had to live with the people back then too. And a lot of times because of the people, they end up in bondage. They end up in Babylon. They end up in jail because of the people. And it's no different today. Amen? So we, uh, we handle this thing with honor and we handle it with respect, amen? Um, my scripture, of course, is Ephesians 4, verse 11 through 12, amen? I've patterned my ministry after this scripture right here. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And I always tell churches, if your church is not edified, you're not doing your job in teaching your people. Amen? People ought to be excited, encouraged, built up, ready to go, ready to get it. Amen? I know uh, I'm kind of semi-retired. You ever see a prophet retire? Tell me who he is. Amen? I'm going to go talk to him. He didn't, have a, he didn't have a calling of God. He had a calling of man. Amen? Um, and before I retired, because people kept saying, well, you get retired, you're going to be on limited income. You'll be on. I said, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. When I retire, I will not be on a limited income. I will be on an unlimited income. Amen. You need to start speaking that into your lives. You need to start speaking that into your, whatever you do. Speak it into your businesses, that you have unlimited income. Amen? You have a voice. They said that you can take a voice you have and move mountains. Right. Amen? And, and that's what I, I'm about today. I mean, I, I got to watch because God gave me a word for somebody here today, and I'm going to wait a little bit before I give it because I want to at least get my message out. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when a prophet gets in the pulpit, he just starts hearing from God and he'll go everywhere. That's why I have notes. And don't get upset because I got notes. I have notes. There's two worldly concepts of the prophetic ministry. Amen? I found in the world today. One's of an old wild-eyed crazy person like me (laughs) with unkept hair. Well, my hair's pretty nice, so amen. Think so? Amen. (laughs) Go look at my grandson now. That's unkept hair. Amen. (laughs) They they live in a cave. They come out every once in a while. They yell at you. They're mad at the world. They, They hate people, it seems like. And then they say something. They run back in. They mutter, repent to you, amen? And then they retreat back to the cave. Because somebody said something about them they didn't like. So they go back to the cave, amen? If you don't like having something said to you you don't like, don't ever come close to any prophetic ministry or any ministry in the body of Christ, amen? Because they were giving as gifts to the church, but sometimes people don't like gifts. They'd rather have it without, Look at the world today. They like it without. They don't want these gifts that God's trying to give them today. Another concept I find out is uh, uh, what I see today is the socially concerned preachers. Amen. They, they, they are those who speak out on the current issues of the day. Amen. And they, they, they speak about the current issues. They preach what I call ecological. Is that right? Did I pronounce it right? Ecological. Ecology. Ecological. Not theological, okay? Then make sure you don't hurt you. 
Ecology, we know, is a branch of science dealing with the relationship between living organisms, orgasms, orgasms, however that is. <laughs> it can be either one, however you want it. <laughs> Amen? If you don't want to laugh and cut up, stay away from my ministry, amen? <laughs> you got to remember, I was an English major. <laughs> now you know what schools are teaching, amen? <laughs> I couldn't even speak back then. <laughs> On the overall realm, the prophetic ministry is faced with much opposition in churches because a lot of people like the teachers and the pastors and stuff because pastors will pat you on the back, tell you keep on sinning and go on. They'll love you anyway and, 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 and they need to have that seat. Amen. I come in and tell you it's time you all just grow up and get it over because these ministries right here are those ministries have been put in the church to equip you to grow up, to mature, to have love in your life. Amen. And be excited about what God's doing in your life. Amen. And give you something to do. That's what people, some people, some people don't like anything to do. They want to just sit there and spew in a pew, okay? Instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of uh, uh, getting up and doing what God called them to do. Sometimes you got to go out and clean up around the dumpster, amen? That's the best prophetic gift you can get. I can pray for a lot of people when I do stuff like that, amen? Oh, no, not me. I'm not getting my hands dirty, but you don't want to be nowhere near babies in the Lord, Amen? Well, you will get your hands dirty. Okay, we're going to move over to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. I'm getting a little tired because evidently somebody's not doing the job because we get all this done. The Bible says Jesus is coming back. Acts chapter 3, verse 19 through 21 says, Repent you therefore and be converted. Oh, there I got my word in repent. Real easy now. That was easy. That didn't hurt, did it? <laughs> repent. And be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And then it says, he'll send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, who the heaven, the heaven must receive him until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Since the world began, prophets have been speaking to the church. Get things done, get it together, get everything restored, and I will send the one that you all been waiting for back to you, Jesus. Amen? So that's, we got a job to do, don't we? We've got to get some stuff restored in the church, and some of the restoration of the church is this fivefold ministry, amen? Easy gifts to the church. The Bible says in chapter, chapter 3, there'll be a restoration of what? All things. It'll be 40 years to become a dry preacher. <laughs> and I've drank more water in the last few years than I've ever drank. So it must not be water. It must be something else. The rest of the prophet ministry will come into the church whether you want to or not. There's many fears concerning the ministry because it does not just bless you. Sometimes it reveals sins. And the way it does, it doesn't do it by outright rebuking you all the time. It does it by blessing you so much it blesses your outer shell off so God can reveal the inner person. Amen? And that's what the prophetic ministry for. And a lot of people don't feel comfortable being around prophets. And a lot of them don't feel comfortable being known as the real prophets. Amen? Because real prophets are not always on the scene. Real prophets are not always in the pulpit. I tell people, if you want a pulpit ministry, you need to stay away from the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry is not a pulpit ministry. It's a behind the scenes ministry if you look in the Bible. A lot of times God didn't speak through a prophet to a person unless he took him into the inner chambers or took him, pulled him back in the field like he did Saul to speak to him. So if you want the limelight, stay away from this ministry. It's not a limelight ministry. It pushes other people forward. A lot of times you see a prophet, there'll be a lot of people in front of him. Because what's he doing? He's doing his job. He's equipping the saints to do the work of service. Every second and fourth Friday nights of the month here at Restoration Christian Church, we teach the saints to do the work of service. We do, let, teach them to do the ministry. Sometimes I'll have them in the pulpit preaching. How they get there? They get there through me getting to know them and knowing what they have. It's called getting to know those who labor amongst you. I know a lot of people bring people in. They don't have a half idea who they are because somebody else told them they were good. 
and they end up messing up and, and run the people in all different directions. I'll point you in one direction. Equip you, equip you, equip you, equip you to do the work of service. I'm trying to work myself out of a job. A lot of people hang on to ministry like it's their job and they don't want to let go of it. I'll turn it loose if you want it. I'm looking for some young Samuels. I'm looking for some young men that want to step up and become the next prophet of the next generation. And wear those crazy outfits the young generation wears. I can't even find any clothes like that. I gave them all a goodwill, I think. <laughs> Brother Floyd Knott says, I think, I think, I, th I think, I think these used to be yours, he said. <laughs> he said, I think these pants used to be yours. I said, would you get them goodwill? I said, yeah. Well, that's where I sent them. <laughs> I still have a little respect for the church and, and, and what I wear in the church. I guess it's come from growing up, amen, being drugged to church. And told I had to wear this, I couldn't wear what I had on to play in. Because most people come to church with what they play in. Because they think they're just playing around. But they're not playing around in this. This is serious business. This is church. Amen. This is coming to meet with God. This is coming to, you need to come in expecting to hear from God. Expecting to go out here with something you didn't have. Amen. Glory to Jesus. I'm preaching good today. Amen. I don't do it every day, but some days I get, I get on. <laughs> Most people don't feel comfortable taking the mantle of, of prophet and the name of the prophet or being known as prophets. What they do, they'll grab the pastor or the evangelist titles because they're more respected, they're more accepted. And then they become frustrated in the ministry. How many times I've told people out there in the ministry, that's not your ministry. If you get in your ministry, God will bless you. And they're still in that ministry not being blessed. Still don't know where the next meal is going to come from. Well, the, Bible, the Lord told me that the descendants of Abraham never be begging bread. If you're out there begging bread, you need to find out what descendants you're of. If you can't get it together, you need to talk to somebody. But you're going to have to swallow up a lot of pride to get that done. Amen? You might just have to come on Friday night and listen to this old preacher. But then you come, I'm going to put you to work. I ain't going to let you sit in that pew. I'll, I'll aggravate you. I'll, I'll poke you until I get you up there doing something. Why? Because you, you're supposed to be doing it. Because until you do it, Jesus is not coming. Now you're holding back Jesus. And I want to see my Savior. Amen? Amen? Just not sing about him. There's many counterfeits out there too of the prophetic ministry. I fight that every day, the place I go. Oh, well, you like that other guy? I said, no. Just like the pastor found out in Cuba. Are you like those other apostles? No. There's a different, there's an authentication, amen? It doesn't come by just you running out like a lone ranger doing your thing. You have to be accountable, amen? You have to be, you have to be somebody that, that's, that's, that's paid the price. It's been through it, amen? It might take you 80 years, but God will still use you. I'm just now getting into my ministry. I told people years ago, one of these days I'm going to retire and go into full-time ministry. I haven't gotten there yet. I got a lot of little prophets hanging on me, you know, in my arms. I got one called Elijah. He's going to be a good one. I can tell by the way he clings to the prophet that he's going to be ready. I'm going to push everything in him I can about the prophetic ministry. And if uh, one of these days, you know, he gets ready to prophesy, I believe it's going to be a good word. Amen. Out of the mouth of babes. I used to prophesy with a baby in my arms. Well, I couldn't do that. First, I've got to find a baby. This baby is all over the place. <laughs> That's what causes the church to reject prophets today because of the counterfeits that we've had to deal with and, and come down the pike, amen? And it's not just uh, man prophets, there's women prophets, amen? I only I, I recognize them. I push them out there. I've had people go out more this year from my ministry than me. So go figure. I'm not. I still get the credit because God knows who sent them. He sent them through me. There will always be those around who do not receive this type of ministry or restoration of truth to the church. Because the restoration of truth to the church is going to cause them to be truthful. Prophets and prophets today are men and women like us called of God. That's all I can tell you. They might be you. I don't know. Have you ever found out? Have you ever asked God? 
Some are anointed and called from birth. Some have been apprehended and anointed at a certain point in their lives. What they are, they are those who speak forth revelational insight from God. They are human beings used in a unique place in the church. This unique place in the church. Because they bring forth one thing, they bring forth is they push requirements of God on God's people. A lot of people don't want to have requirements. I forgot what scripture I'm on now. Am I on Acts chapter 2, verse 19? Can we get that? If you can follow me, you're doing good. But I'll already do that one. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. That sounds good. That sounds better. It's probably not one of those other scriptures in the Bible. I'm just checking on you to see if you know your Bible, okay? <laughs> According to Ephesians 2, verse 19 to 20, they are part of the foundational ministry of the church. Amen? If you don't have them in the church, you ain't got no foundation. That's why most churches fall apart. And by the way, we have most church splits because you don't have a foundation. And from day one of this church, we had a foundation of apostle and prophet in the church. That's why your church didn't have any splits, didn't have any uh, problems other than, you know, a few sick folk getting upset and leaving. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 through 20. You there yet? Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen? We are a part of the foundation of the church. That means you all can step on us all you want to. You can build on us any way you want to build on us. Amen? Hope you build on, the right on a good foundation. Amen? It's hard to build on another man's foundation. We know that. Prophet's ministry is marked more by the revelational gifts. The word of knowledge, the gift of prophecy, the word of wisdom, coupled with the gift of sermon, is not known for great public speaking. Sometimes God makes them speak. Remember, though, in the church, though, the existence of one ministry depends on the others being in existence. You can't have a number two without one, can you? You ever try to count to ten without a two? It'd be right. You'll count down from 10 down to 1 without a 5. It's not going to work. You cannot be second if there's not a first. Thank God there's a first. I don't want to be first. Some people want to be first. They take the blunt of the force. Amen? And you can't be a third unless there's a second. So I don't know what all these other guys have been doing, running around saying of this if they hadn't believed in apostles or prophets or churches that don't have them. I feel sorry for churches that don't have these ministries to equip the saints. That's why they're, they're upset with the people because they're not doing anything, but they're not equipping them. I never understand that. I shake my head thinking about that. You're upset with your people, but you're not equipping them. Because you think you're all in all. You can't be all in all. When Jesus Christ left the earth, he gave gifts to men. He was all in all. Amen? But he knew that we need to have the five to keep the order to keep the consistency. Amen? Because we all need somebody to check on us. Amen? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28, it says that God has set in the church first apostles. Who first? Have we been doing this backwards? That, well, church is always going to do things backwards. Amen? It says first they put the apostles in the church. Then the prophets. Then the teachers. And if you have all this in the church, guess what you're going to have in the church? You're going to have miracles, gifts of healing, helps, governments, and even diversities of tongues. Tongues. Oh, no. Tongues. We got diversity of tongues, but I don't know if it's the right kind or not. Amen? <laughs> we need to get the right kind of diversity of tongues in this place. Not, 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 not what. The... Let's get this thing together. Amen? Get our act together. I always said that foundation precedes revelation and revelation precedes teaching. Without revelation, you don't have a good teaching. Without foundation, you don't have a good revelation or teaching. Amen? Prophets are not teachers. They can teach. I've proved that over the years. I've taught a lot of people, not just in this area, but other areas to do what I do. And they're doing it in that area now. I don't have to go back there. They're doing it. 
And I've ordained some people in other areas to do what I do. So that the church isn't left to where, well, one of these days we'll have a ministry come back in and bless us again. And when he comes back in, he'll bless us. We'll be good for a day, but then the rest of the week we'll fall apart. <laughs> You all got luxuries here. You got them all the time. Amen. Take advantage of them? No, not most of the time you don't. You just want to live your hard life the way it is and get it over with. I'll go in dragging my feet into the kingdom. Glory to God. There's an easier way. They always told me there's an easier way. There's always a way you don't have to reinvent the wheel. They always told me that. I, I listened to all those teachings of all these people, and they kept on reinventing the wheel. They kept on having somebody else come in and say something different. Then a group would run over here. Then have somebody come in the next time, say something different. They all run over here like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off. Why can't we just go straight? Straight is the way, and narrow is the path, they tell me. Let these other guys shove in on you, but you keep going straight. Hallelujah. The prophet's one who speaks revelation to the church. I speak revelation to the church. I speak vision. I can, I can bring out many visions, but I cannot always fulfill the vision by myself because that's the job of the church to fulfill the vision. They wonder why the vision that the prophet spoke didn't get fulfilled. They don't do anything with it. It was a good word. It was glorious. Like some people get a prophecy from me, a prophecy from my team or somebody like that, and they say, well, nothing ain't happening. Are you doing anything? All prophecies in the New Testament are conditional. If you will. You eat the good of the land. What if? Prophecy in the Old Testament, spoken by God. God, there's, there's a lot of prophecies of God that are unconditional. It's going to happen whether you want it to or not. Prophets are those who speak forth revelation from God. I want to let you know the prophets are alive and well in the church today. They are living. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're not building up their ministry and coming to you every once in a while preaching the message and prophesying to a couple of people. They're teaching you to train the saints. They're tra teaching you as saints to train other saints to do the ministry. Amen? That's a true prophet. He's equipping the saints to do the work of service. He might bless you once in a while. He might tell you what you need to know if you ask him. I have people say, well, you didn't tell us. You didn't ask me. I'm not going to horn in on your life if you don't want me to. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. Which part don't you understand? I think more prophets will be appearing on the scene as great numbers of the other ministries get themselves in their place. I wouldn't want to have a church that didn't have an apostle and a prophet in it. I left a church that was like, like that, didn't have those. Why would I want to go back to it? Hmm? One more scripture and I'm going to, not close, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do something. <laughs> you get me in a pulpit, I'm dangerous. I might raise you a million dollars today for the church. I heard old brother Dan say a couple weeks ago that people pay him to do what he loves to do. I pay people to do what I love to do. Because the Bible says, buy the gospel and sell it not. Amen. If you know wherever I go, they get more out of me than I, I get out of them. Because I believe there is a true ministry to the church. People don't like that sometimes because they have a love of that stuff. Amen? If anybody gives me anything, I don't ask for it. They go ahead and do it. I like it better that way. I don't have to come home saying, well, they didn't treat me right. That was terrible. That church is terrible. They, were, they don't know how to treat a ministry. Well, you just confessed to them they ain't no good, so why go back to them? <laughs> if you're saying that over your church, why don't you change your confession? You might have a lot bit of more fun. You come see me on a Friday night. I'll stir you up, cheer you up one way or another. I'll get rid of that old sad face you got. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but man of understanding will draw it out. Who? Man of understanding is going to draw it out. That means you're not understanding if you can't draw that counsel out of somebody. 
There's much counsel I found out over the years that goes to the grave of the ministries that has the good counsel. Why? Because people don't know how to draw it out of them. You got to be able to draw it out of them. Amen? That's all my notes. I guess we'll have to quit. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Is it lunchtime yet? Get used to this crazy watch. I'll find out what time it is. I don't want to go overtime. You have to pay me overtime then. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, God's good God. Amen. He knows exactly where you're at today. And I'm just going to minister to a couple people today. I don't usually do this, but because uh, I got so many people doing it for me now, I'm getting, I'm getting what do you call it? Spoil. <laughs> this scripture in the Bible talks about spoiled saints. Everybody doing it for them. So they don't do it. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord you gave me a word for Aaron Hayes. Amen. God's been speaking to my heart about Aaron for some time. And, and, and I thought, well, one of these days I'm going to be able to speak the right word of God to him. And Brother Aaron, the Lord spoke to me and said that you've been seeking for some answers. You've been looking for some things that, that you, you say, Lord, I'm gonna go, I need to put all this all together so I can go ahead and finish the work that you gave me. And the Lord said, I've got a new agenda for you. I've got a much greater ministry for you than you could even imagine. Now, I'm getting ready to unfold that to you in the days to come, but you're going to have to do one thing. You're going to have to let something down in order to pick something else up. But the Lord said, there's, there's an education in you that you're not using, and the Lord said, I'm going to show you how to use that education for your good. But the Lord said, it won't just bless you, but it'll bless others all around about you. And the Lord said, deep down inside of you is much wisdom. And with much wisdom comes sometimes much pain. But the Lord said, there's been some uh, uh, roadblocks and some things coming that the, that the enemy try to throw in your feet to try to stumble you up and it's almost like uh, what we call the stumbling stones, amen? But God said he wants you to take those stumbling stones, get out in the middle of that water and make an altar for him and Lord said I'll dry up the ground so you can walk over on dry ground, amen? But Lord said there's, a, there's some things now getting ready to uh, unfold before you if you're willing to grab a hold of it that's going to take you beyond well, you've got that now. But I just sense there's a, there's a destiny that God wants you to fulfill. There's a legacy, the Lord said, that I want you to, to grasp a hold of and carry to the end because the Lord said, I'm coming down this hour to speak to you in not layman's terms, the Lord said, because you ain't going to get your answers from man. You can get your answers from God. And the Lord said, I'm coming down to spend some time with you, to speak to your heart, to let you know I have your back. And I'm going to take you beyond your capabilities. I'm going to take you beyond where you've ever found yourself before. But he says, don't drag your feet, but get ready to rise up and be the man of God I called you to be. Because I didn't put that in you to waste. I didn't spend the finances and the things that I did and the time that I did with family members and things to let you drag it on the ground. I want you to rise up, pick up that mantle and get ready to fly. Because you can only imagine what I'm getting ready to do in your life from this day forth. So get ready to mount up like wings of an eagle. Because you ain't going to be able to carry this by yourself. You're going to need, you're going to need the, all the help of the angels of God and the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit to carry you on. So it's time to brush away the tears and brush away the fears and take on what I've called you to take on in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. There's a brother in there. I think it's a brother. Oh, I forgot your name now, brother. Right here with the glasses on. God says, you ain't seen nothing yet. You get ready because you've been faithful in a little. The Lord said, I won't make you Lord over much. You've got an anointing in an area that sometimes doesn't get fully used the way it should. But Lord said, sometimes it's because of your time. But Lord said, I'm going to take your time. I'm going to give you my time. And I want you to be ready to lay down one thing and pick up another and get ready to move in an area that you, you, sometimes you're not really comfortable about being in that place. But the Lord said, I'll put you in your place if you allow me to put you in your place. And the Lord said, guess what? You're going to be blessed. You're going to be encouraged. And, and, you, and you, sometimes you're concerned about what's my next step in my life? What's my next step in, 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 in my situation? Lord said, you take the step I want you to take and I'll take care of the other steps. 
Amen. So get ready to move forward in that, brother, okay? Lord's going to bless you. He said he would. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And then right down here, there's a couple right here. It's not, it's, it's not just one. Don't ever look at yourself as one. You're a couple. Amen. What's his name? I forget it. Samuel. 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 Oh. Well, glory to God. I said the Lord was looking for some Samuels. Amen. <laughs> but along with the Samuel comes the other part. Amen. And God wants you to do right. Amen. And get ready to see him increase. Like I said, get ready to enlarge your tents. Get ready to put down some stakes. Get ready to quit fooling around in what I called you to do. Because listen, I've not only called you, I've called your better part too. Amen. And sometimes she keeps kind of hold you together. Because <laughs> you can get out in, you know, different fields. Because you have some good fields. You have, you have something really that would fund a ministry without anybody else even giving you a dollar. So Lord said, I ain't going to let you do that because then you think it's a uh, self-made ministry. I said, I'm going to make you team up. I'm going to make you get in there and root about some things. I'm going to give you a, and, and put somebody behind you that, that won't let the, the arrows of the enemy shoot you in the back. Amen. So you get ready to move into the area that God's called you to move into and get ready to see what he's going to do in your life. Lord said, there's a, there's a whole abundance of blessings and a whole abundance of potential deep down inside of you. The Lord said, I'm going to pull it out. If I have to jerk you out, I'll pull you out yes. and put you into your place. The Lord said, it's time. He said, what have you been waiting for? Time? No. Time stands still for no man. The Lord said, it's now high time. You've been called into the kingdom. For this time, you're going to move into your time. Amen? Yes. So both of you, I want you to start thinking about this. And don't do it because man says it. Do it because your father said it. Because he loves you. And he wants the best for you. And you ain't going to have to grab root and growl to get it if you're willing to pick up and take off with it. Amen? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen? Only thing bad about this type of ministry is you can't get everybody, which I like to give everybody. That's why I have teams to do it. Amen? You come on Friday night, nobody goes out without getting blessed or doing something. You ready to do something? Come see me. I'll put you to work in the Holy Ghost. Amen? I might put you to work any other way too if you need that. There's always something to do. Amen? Hallelujah. Lord bless you, I better quit while I'm ahead. Amen? <laughs> Just want you to know, God has a gift with your name on it. Some of you has a ministry with your name on it. Some of you has a, a helps with your name on it. He has a government with your name on it. I think it's time for the Christians to take over the world. You ain't going to do it sitting in the church. You're going to do it out there in public. I get more blessed by speaking to somebody in public than I do in the church. Because at least they receive it a lot of times because they say, wow, really? You didn't know that, did you? I said, no, I didn't. I just did it with fear and trembling. Because prophets are a very weak ministry, amen? They're very weak people. So they need God all the time. They need the anointing. They need the, uh, the Holy Ghost to keep them, amen? Because sometimes they can get a inferiority complex they don't need to have and run to a cave and complain and gripe until God brings down the earthquake and the storms and all that stuff. And then they're afraid to go out of the cave for sure. Then he finally comes in and says, now, now, I'm here. Now, come on, come on. And he leads them out of the cave, doesn't he? And back into the ministry. And that's what you do to a time when God does a lot of ministry they don't realize, amen? So I want to encourage you all. I love you all. I'll be blessed, amen, in the Holy Ghost. Brother Kerry can come up and finish this off and tell you what I said. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise God. I, I hope you were stirred up this morning. Amen. Stand with me if you would. Thank you. That was a good word. 
Amen. Amen. I want to I want to pray if you just agree with me this morning. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you for the word that we just received. Father, I pray that the seed would take root in our lives. Uh, we bind any attack of the enemy to come and try to steal that from us. Lord, I pray that, uh, that we, your people, are stirred up to walk in the things that you have called us. Father, all the, all the giftings and callings you've placed on our lives, Lord, that we are stirred up into those things, that we are obedient. We say yes and amen, Father. We just... Um, uh, offer ourselves to you in service, Lord, to be your people and to do the things that you have asked of us, Father. I just thank you for, uh, for your people. I speak a blessing over them this morning, everywhere that they go, that they would be a light and a witness, that they would be salt uh, in a flavorless place, Father, that we would be the people you have called us to be in the world. In Jesus' name, amen.